Hey guys, in this video today, we're going to take a look at JWG support and Flow Enterprise. And this video is based off of a Medium article that one of my colleagues um, posted. I do highly suggest that you take a look at this as well while going through the video or you know before or after watching this video. Um, uh, the link will be in the description below. And basically why we want to go through this is security in microservices is a very important point because you have all of these different decoupled services that often need to talk to each other. So you need to make sure that these different services have the ability to communicate with each other in a secure fashion so that any data that you're transmitting or any information that's being set on rest within the actual services itself are done in a secure fashion. And so what we're going to take a look at is how we can use a JWT activity that was built custom and add that into a Flow Enterprise project and actually use that to enforce the usage of a token to access our actual endpoint. So to start off, um, just quickly going through what um, the post says, um, we're going to use AWS Cognito as our way to um, you know, authenticate um, the access to our endpoint. And then once we build that up, we're going to actually have to build a few REST services in Flogo. So I'm not going to go through this um, completely. I do suggest you open this up, you know, take a look at it while we're actually going through this or before or after. So in Flogo itself, I actually have the application already uh, built out. Um, one thing before I actually show this, in the article itself, you scroll all the way down, it'll bring you to a GitHub repo that has the actual JSON needed to deploy or, or you know run this on Flogo. So what you do is you download this JSON, you would just in create a project, you would import that JSON, and then it would actually create the app for you with everything in there. And there'll have, be a few changes you have to make, and I'll touch upon those um, in here as well. So let's say you imported that, you'll have two applications that I'll show here. If you are using the latest version of Flogo, you will have no issues, you know, with any of the, let's say, configurations being passed over. If you're using a later version, so if you're not using 2.6.1, if you're using maybe 2.6.0 or something later, you may have to do some sort of configuration for the subflows. Um, I, do, I do suggest that you do use the latest version though, because it does provide, you know, allows all the features that we have available to be used. So let's start off by looking at the main flow. And essentially what this is, is it's just a you know REST um, application that is run on port 999 and it has a specific path that you enter. And what it does is if you look at the different, let's look at the inputs and outputs, what it does is that you're gonna provide some sort of you know uh, variables, headers, and things like that. In this case, we're gonna be using the authorization header and we're gonna be outputting some sort of um, information that's needed. And so this is the main flow. And within the main flow itself, there's actually a subflow that we'll be using. So, and the, that subflow is this JWT validation. Um, this is the one that we saw, you know, on the other screen that there was two. And basically, where this um, validation is, is you'll need to. Where basically, what it does is that it validates the JWT token or the token that you're using to authenticate the connection or the access to your actual application. And so just, um, I said I was gonna make a note, if you're using 2.6.1, this should show up here within the token input. Um, if you're using like 2.6.0, like I was using in this version, what I had to do is actually type this out. So you need to make sure that this shows up. Um, I do highly suggest, you know, click on JWP validation, go to input token, um, make sure that you see something like this, um, or then you won't actually be able to run this application correctly. So um, just keep that in mind. Basically what this is doing is that the authorization input what we're doing is that we want to get rid of any type of text or any type of white space before the actual or before the actual um, let's say token itself. And then we have some branches here that will, if we look at it, basically has conditions. So what happens is if it's not valid, false, then it will actually return into here. What happened is that we'll get a 401 error, so forbidden error. Um, if it's true, it'll actually go through or and if it, it will go through, go through this log message, post some sort of log message, we'll receive name, it'll post that into you. And then depending on what the conditions, so in this case, we take a look at it. Um, if it's, you know, if the scope is this, this is what we're using as the scope itself, then it will, you know, go to here. If it's not, then it will go to the second return. So relatively simple main flow, um, just REST service calls upon a subflow. If you're curious about subflows, there's another video on the playlist that you can take a look at and um, it, it'll be helpful. So if we look at the subflow itself, um, notice that there is no trigger. So most cases, subflows do not have any triggers because they're just being called upon by an activity. Um, 
basically what happens, we're using this JWT activity. This is a custom activity. This doesn't come out of the box with Flow Enterprise. So if you want to install that, um, also if you go in the article, there is a link to the activity being used. So I am another of my colleagues, Andy Hampshire, he created this activity and it has all of the go files and things needed. So what you'll do is you'll need to zip all this up. You'll need to upload that as um, an extension and then you'll have that available to be used within Flow Enterprise. And if you have any questions on that, there's also a video on adding extensions on the playlist as well. So once you do that, you'll be able to access this activity, um, set the mode to verify. In this case, you have to specify the token. So, you know, some token for the input, a secret. Um, so there'll be a public key that you need to specify in the algorithm. So in this case, we're using RS256. Um, the secret. Um, so you may be wondering, where do I actually get this public key? Well, in this example, I'm, I go to JWTIO and I actually, if I go here, um, there's a public key provided. So what I did is that I took the public key from, you know, the signature provided here, and I added those different components and replaced it. Um, or what you'll need to do is that you'll need to replace what's shown here. You can expand that to make it a little easier. Um, replace the values that you see here with the values that you may see here on your browser. And that will actually allow your, your, um, your application to access and use that public key that's um, provided by JWTIO. So this is something to keep in mind, something you do have to change no matter what. Um, you will have to change the public key to whatever is showing up on JWTIO there. And so after you did that, then basically what it does is that'll map some sort of values. Um, in this case, it's just the input schema. You won't have to change anything here. Um, some log message, and then I'll return some value here as well. And if that doesn't happen, there's a few um, branches and things like that. So once again, condition, if it's false, it'll give you some sort of return. If it, there's an error, um, it will give you some sort of return as well. So there is some sort of error handling um, built within the subflow and within the main flow itself to take care of if you, let's say you have some sort of forbidden or if the whatever you're accessing isn't um, the right URL or things like that, then you know, you'll have to uh, take care of that. So um, before we before I finalize going through this, there's a few things I need to go through in Amazon Cognito. So I do suggest that you have some sort of familiarity with Cognito to begin with, um, just because there are some instructions on how to do this within the um, Medium post, the Alexander Creative. Um, but it's a lot easier if you already have some ideas of where to find things and what you need to do. Um, so if you do go through the example, you'll you know you'll set up everything pretty much right. There's a couple things you need to keep in mind. First thing is this pull ID. So you'll need this pull ID in order to basically specify what your or what the endpoint or what basically what the endpoint of uh, Cognito is for you, and then the domain name. So you'll need to find some sort of domain name um, that can be accessed uh, more authenticated um, externally. So like let's say if I go through these instructions, well here he says I made up Cognito setup. So user pool app client resource name. Um, you set the enable provider credentials, enable scope, and things like that. Well in the instructions itself. Um, those are a few things that it doesn't mention with regard to adding the domain and then making sure that you do know that the uh, pull ID is what you need in order to access it. And those are a few things that you would know if you were a Cognito user or had some experience with it. So I do suggest, you know, um, get yourself a little bit familiar with it. And if you don't, you might struggle a little bit uh, with this part. And because of that, um, if you go here, you will need to change or what you'll need to do is um, what I did here. So to find the Cognito uh, ISS, or basically the endpoint, and basically what this is, is what the pull ID is. So I replace that. So you'll need to replace that as well. And you'll, you'll have to replace the client ID as well, which can be found if you go to, I believe, let's see, app clients, um, client ID, and just replace that as well. So once you've made those changes, um, you'll be able to actually build this out. So I'm gonna go build. Um, my machine is a Mac, so I'm gonna use a Darwin. Build. What it's going to do is that it's actually going to build a binary for me. It'll take about 20 to 30 seconds for that. Once it built it builds it out, I'll have to give it executable permission um, because it doesn't, you know, uh, provide that by default. And once I build that out, then I'll be able to run it. I'll show you how it looks like without um, adding the token first. And then once we actually add the token um, to authorize the access, we'll show you how that looks like as well. So I'll just give that a few more seconds and it should give prompt me a message um, of where I want to save it. So I should get a little save box. I'm gonna save it in this folder. 
and then I'm gonna go to my terminal. I should see it there. I'm gonna give it executable privileges and I'm gonna run it. And address is already in used. So I probably did not kill the other version, the other one I had running. So let me just kill that. So yeah, that's one thing to keep in mind, you know, make sure that the port that you specified, you could always change this port. If let's say you have something running on 9999, you can always change it within the app itself. You don't have to use this. There's nothing special about it. Um, in this case, I just killed the other one I had running on another window. So you see how the application is running now. Um, you know, nothing has been sent to it, but um, it's active and ready to receive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Postman and I'm going to remove this authorization key. And yeah, I'm just going to run this. So I should get a unauthorized error because I don't have the authorization key to access it. If I go here um, in the logs itself, it's going to say, you know, token error, invalid number of segments because there aren't enough you know, segments to run this. And it's gonna say done. So I wasn't actually able to run the application and get the output I was looking for. And that's because I didn't authorize on the endpoint correctly. So what I need to do is there is, and this is why I also said to keep note of our, this is why you have to create that domain name. You have to do a post on the actual domain of the Cognito service itself. And because of that, um, if you don't, if you don't do that, you won't actually be able to get what the actual token is, the access token is. And this is old. Um, I did this like a day ago, so I'm going to have to renew it. Um, a few things you have to do in terms of values or keys you have to put. So grant type, client ID, uh, client secret. Those are found, um, once again, here in the app clients. I'm not going to show you what the secret is, but the app clients here, if you should show details, it'll show you um, what the actual um, secret is. And then in terms of what the other one they have to do, which is um, grant type, you can find that in the instructions here. So if I go through here, um, here you see grant type, it says client credentials. So once I run this, I should be able to get a new token that I can use. So this is a new access token that'll allow me to basically run and authenticate onto Cognito. And if I wanna to confirm to make sure that this is correct, what I would do is I would go to JVT IO and I would paste that new token. And what I should see is that the ISS, you know, matches to what my pool ID has um, at the scope and then with the actual um, client ID. So that should be matched as well. So all that looks good. Um, what I'm gonna do is go back to Postman. I'm going to reclick that. I'm gonna change the value of this token. Um, something to keep in mind is that you do need to include that bearer um, type, because if you look at the, here, it says token type bearer, so you don't need to do that. Once you've added that there, you should be able to just run this. And we actually see that we were able to authenticate correctly and run the application itself. So now that we've added an authorization, you know, key with the value of, you know, the token being provided by Cognito, I was able to actually run this application successfully and get the message that I'm looking for. And I have to go into the logs of the actual, you know, um, Flogo. In this case, it's going to provide me what the input token was. It's going to say, okay, it's going to map. It's going to give me some sort of information of, you know, what I want to see, the scope, ISS, things like that. It's going to say it's a valid token. It's going to give me authentication access, things like that. And then I'll notice that the received name um, is actually showed there. So all those different things, um, these things weren't being shown when, you know, I was getting error with a token. But now that I actually had the authentication token, I was able to actually access that and see that. Um, and actually run the, the app application itself. So yeah, so this is um, very helpful if you're looking at security within you know, building applications in Flow Enterprise, if you wanna use JWT as a way to secure um, the different you know, connectivity between applications or maybe externally as well um, in Flow. So I hope this example was helpful. Like I said earlier, this is a little bit more complex. It's a little bit more um, you know, upper level in terms of wrapping your head around it. So I do suggest that you have some knowledge on JWT, Cognito, and Flogo. If you do get confused, there are some other videos in the playlist that should help you get started as well. And last but not least, you know, make sure to actually run through the Medium article. Um, it'll give you, it'll, it's, it's helpful in actually building this out and, and, you know, learning a little bit more of what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, well, thank you. I hope this video was helpful and feel free to check out some other ones in the playlist below. Thank you.